Hello everyone, how are you today? It is Sharon here from the blog I Restore Stuff. If you're watching the replay, please comment the word replay below in the comments uh, to get a chance at winning a prize in the 24 hours after we go live. So I am just going to turn on the laptop here, make sure we're seeing all of the comments because sometimes I can't see them on my phone. I see there's a few people joining us. How are you today? Hi, Joyce Ann, you're the first to comment. Hi, how are you today? Uh, some people get notifications. Sometimes Facebook doesn't send them out all at the same time and so some people jump on slowly. So that's okay. I like to just start so that when people are watching the replay, they can kind of get a good idea of where we're up to. And um, there we go. I can see Kathy's here from Massachusetts. Elisa's here, Tracy is sprinkling. Thank you so much for reminding everybody. Don't forget to do this. I love it when you do and um, it helps to let other people know that we are live right now about to do a project and I love the community we have here. Thank you, so many people jumping on to saying hello. Um, if you are new here or if you know someone who hasn't seen a live before, let them know about it. Um, oh, thank you, Patricia. She's asking, how's my knee? Oh, yes, if you weren't here last week, I had the week before after my live. So let's see, it's two weeks now. Um, I had a knee injury, fell from a, a height sideways, kind of twisted my knee out sideways. Um, X-rays showed that there's no external ligament damage. They can't rule out the meniscus. But anyway, I am walking on it without crutches, but just kind of hobbling around. But... Um, yeah, so it's getting better. So thank you so much for asking. Thank you, Kimberly, for sprinkling. Hi, Carol. Yes, we're going to be doing a laundry sign today. So this is a good, fun gift idea. Perhaps mum or someone who loves to do laundry but might need a little bit of help. So we've got the laundry sign stencils in our new farm collection. And I'll just be using a blank canvas today. Now I have removed some of the staples from the outside. About to do these last staples here if you haven't ever tried to remove staples before, well um, maybe I'll give you some tips on that and um, a staple remover to use. Patricia says that's good, yes. We need our knees and I don't realise how much you need your knees until, <laughs> until you don't have the use of one. Um, but my left leg is growing stronger because that's the one that's doing all the work these days. All right, so I'll be doing a blank canvas. I'll be removing the canvas from it and doing one of those um, you know, frames, I want to see the frame outside the canvas, so we want that framed look of a stencil. We're going to be doing some painting of it and all of that kind of thing. So I might get started because that's what you're here for, to see the, um, the live. Okay, yes, Elizabeth, you got a notification. That's amazing. So for those people who may not have gotten a notification yet, we'll, they can just watch some replay. Um, but yeah, if you do subscribe to or make sure that you are on Essential Stencils page, you go to those three little dots up in the top, on, top right, I think it is, on your phone, and you can actually select to receive notifications of when we go live. So don't forget, anything that you see in our live today that Essential Stencil produces, you can use my code IRESTOREStUFF and get 10% off anything in the shop. Now, there, I want to thank you all for those of you who were using our Black Friday um, codes during the Black Friday sale. Oh, Diana, I feel for your sister who, she said it's her second knee replacement. Oh, it's just a long time, isn't it, the, the recovery for these kind of things. So, yes, thank you, Tracy. Reverse canvas. We're going to do a reverse canvas sign today. Sometimes I uh, use a board to just put back here and paint the board, but today I'm actually going to use a blank canvas, paint the canvas. And let me just show you the staple remover. Now, I do have an Amazon link for that. If you go to my Amazon link, you can see um, I've made a list there of all of the fun things. Oops. <laughs> showing you what not to do. All of the things that I use for stencil making, sign making, ideas that I come across um, that are great fun um, things. And so Amazon's been having their some really good sales during this Cyber Monday, Black Friday and all of that kind of thing. So if you do want that link, um, I can grab that for you. It's my list and it does have this staple remover sort of on the 
in the list somewhere. So I'll just pop that in. Um, if you can see that, great. You may have to look for my name because I've popped it in under my name. So this just grabs the staple literally and you can just see that it, it goes, it's got this little maneuver, maneuvering tool that slides under the staple. So you have to kind of use that. And then you just wiggle it up and down and it gets the staples out really nicely and neatly. Sometimes you have to just wriggle it, then you just do a lift and it comes straight out. There are occasions where, say for example I'm doing it on, um, I use this a lot of the time for when I do furniture makeovers and I do it for upholstery. So sometimes with the very, very old staples, you might get the odd staple that could break off uh, or snap during this process of removing. So when that happens, I do, oh, I didn't bring them out here, I don't think. Oh, I did. I do use, so these are, I call them pincers, and they actually grab a hold of the staple and just bend. It rocks on the wood just like this. Instead of just trying to pull it out, um, it's a lot easier to just grab the staple than remove it with that. So those are another great tool that I use for that. So just thought I would pop that info on because you are here to get tips, aren't you? <laughs> So then we want to make sure that those staples all go in the trash and not end up on the floor. So now we have our canvas fully removed. One staple left, guys. Look at this. Uh, Elizabeth says it's a vicious looking staple remover. It's actually quite good. It's really good. Now, this, there's one little piece right here that's left that I didn't see that was in there. So it allows it to wiggle underneath the staple because it's a tapered end on this corner here triangular shape. So you just wriggle it under and it lifts it right out. Brilliant. Whoever invented that staple remover. So now I have a canvas frame and I'm going to be staining that with some kind of uh, probably fusion mineral paints. I wanted to try their driftwood colour but I do have hardly any left in there. <laughs> Hopefully I've got enough just to do a frame. I like to use every last drop out of the um, out of the bottle. So all right, so let me know if you are here for the first, yes, Diana, it is better than a screwdriver. If you are here for the very first time and you've never stenciled before, we'd love to know that too. Don't forget there are prizes uh, during our live. So make sure you join in the conversation and you may have a chance of winning a prize at the end of our live. So guys, please, please, please go ahead and share the live. I might do that now so we can get our numbers up and um, let other people know how they can win a prize. So my blog is called I Restore Stuff and up on the description of our live I have got um, my link to my page which is I Restore Stuff um, on Facebook, Instagram, all of the different places. Uh, so second time here Betty. Yay! So glad that you could join us, your first whole live. Let's see, that's great. Did everyone have a lovely Thanksgiving last week? So we've got our canvas here. I love the conversation that happens in the comments. I don't always get to hear all of it or see all of it, but I do love to go back after our lives finished and, um, and see who's commented or if you have any questions, feel free to do that too. Kathy is here from Boise, woohoo! Hey Kimberly. Um, okay, so now we have got some Fusions Coal Black. Now this is paint I love to use for my furniture refinishing, which is what I do when I'm not sign making. Uh, so I'm just using a Stelmeester brush. It's just a your average furniture painting brush. And we're just going to lay a nice good coat all over the canvas. Now really, what's going to happen is this frame is only going to show this inward part here, but I want to extend it out to the edges just to make sure I've covered all of the bases of this. So I feel like this is, Fusion does have really good coverage, especially with some of its darker colours. We may need a second coat, uh, but maybe not. You never know. Who else likes to do dark backgrounds for their signs? Um, a lot of the time, especially with this sort of farmhousey style, we'll do the white with the black writing on it. But I like to do some black signs or even in um, 
Fusion's example, I mean not Fusion, Essential Stencils example of this particular stencil set that I'm going to be using today, they've used a green background similar to a chalkboard. We call them blackboards here, but I guess they're chalkboards. You know the vintage green instead of a black chalkboard, they're a vintage green colour. I really like that colour too, so that's another fun idea. You could make yours look like a, a chalkboard. Oh, everyone's getting on and saying hello. Nice to be able to watch another second live. Gay Johnson, welcome to the live today. Okay, so I have covered that pretty well. I feel like it may need a second coat, so we can just blast that with my hairdryer here for a second and uh, make sure we've got a good coverage on that. And while we do, let me know. Kimberly says, I hope everyone has, a one, has had a wonderful first half of the week. Absolutely. It's Wednesday there. I'm telling you now, I'm from Australia, and so right here, it is the 1st of December because it's actually Thursday morning here in Australia today, so I'm just feeling really Christmassy. I feel like Christmas has begun. Once the 1st of December is here, it's all on. So the Christmas lights are twinkling on the Christmas tree. Has everyone been decorating? Yes, Gloria, you say blackboards there too, but yeah, the green ones, um, I guess, you know, people are more calling them chalkboards because they do have that vintage green colour as well. And with the popularity of chalk paints, um, you know, there's a lot more different colours that you can actually use for your actual chalkboards. This one's not going to be a chalkboard today, but you can use Fusion Mineral Paints uh, paint because it's such a matte flat matte colour, you can actually use that as a chalk paint, a uh, chalkboard finish, you know, to use on your chalkboards. So, welcome back everybody, Essential Stencils saying, grateful that you could uh, have some time off over the holidays. And now, here we go. So there's one coat. Let's just do that second coat. I feel like I've got a little bump there on my canvas. We don't want that. So you can kind of see it's covered mostly, and there were a few little dings in my canvas. I just literally put, picked this canvas frame up from an op shop, we call them here in Australia, a thrift store. And I'm just going to give this a second coat quickly. And I know that I don't need to go right out to those edges this time because... It's just got to fill what my frame was. Let's have a look. I'll just show you that frame. There we go. I'll just frame my, my chalkboard sign here so that you can see that. If you swipe off your comments, you can see that bit there down the bottom of your phone. But if maybe you're watching on the laptop today. It's interesting where people, different people watch. Did you know you can also watch these? I think you can watch Facebook Lives. Oh, maybe not the live versions. On your television, if you've got a digital TV that does that streaming of Facebook and YouTube and all the places. Pretty sure that can happen too these days. All right. So we've got our second coat there just to make sure it's got a super good coverage. And while that's drying, it's raining here today. I don't know if you can hear the rain, but it's bucketing down, which is nice because usually at this time of year, you know, we are in the opposite season here in Australia, so we have summer Christmases summer Christmases. Can you even imagine? Um, so they are very hot and so right now we're enjoying the last little bit of spring showers here because we've just had spring. Ah, I'm getting paint everywhere and I didn't bring a plastic bag to pop my brush into. Tori, sorry, could you bring me a, a tub with water in it for my brushes and a plastic bag also? from the bench in my workshop, that'd be great. There's plastic bags up on the bench there. So I've got my helpful assistant who's at home doing university assignments today. So I <laughs> said, so can you listen out? Because it takes me a while to hobble in there. Um, is it an essential stencil brush? No, I was just using an ordinary paint brush that I use for uh, furniture painting. You can get these also, these are um, Stylemeister brand. 
These are great brushes. They have tapered filaments at the end, really super easy to clean. So if you're doing furniture painting or just want to paint a whole bunch of signs, they are great for that too. And if you use my um, Fusion affiliate link for that, thank you so much. Uh, they have the Stolmeister brand on that link. So if you're wanting the Fusion Paint link or that, uh, I'm just popping this back in brush in a plastic bag, which is what I do for when I might want to use it later for other signs and things. Okay, so while that's drying, let's get onto our frame. So we're doing a reverse canvas today. I've got the frame. Now sometimes you might want to just check. It's always a surprise what, ha what the frame is like when you remove it, the, remove the canvas from the frame. Um, these ones in particular have some staples right down here. So if you really wanted to, and it does have a bit of a slightly beveled edge. Can you see that? It's beveled uh, has a ridge in there, which is a nice part of the frame. The back is nice and flat, which is great. That would be a great option too. But it has these staple marks all down around the edges from where we unstapled the canvas. So I do like to use the front, and it does also have the the marks where you, um, the lines where you can wedge in the st stretches, you know, the canvas stretches. <coughs> um, so you can remove these staples here if you wanted to and just turn around on the back and double staple in the back. So that would be an option too. I don't mind the rustic look of that, so I'm just going to go with it. All right, now I'm going to use my staple remover again to undo my can here that I want to use to work on. I just put my glasses on. I totally forgot I wasn't wearing them. That will help me see your comments a lot better. Um, oh, someone's having a birthday. Happy birthday to all with December birthdays. Ah, there you go, Elizabeth Ann. Happy birthday to all those people. <coughs> so Michelle's asking, what's a reversed canvas? So I'm just literally took a canvas off a sign, removed all the staples off it using my handy staple gun. And I've got the frame here, and then we're going to put the frame on the front. So we'll staple that sign to the back once we've got our... I haven't even showed you the stencil I'm using today, have I? It's in the description of our live here if you really wanted to have a look at that. Now I'm going to add some stain. This is driftwood, a stain and finishing oil by Fusion. You could use a wax to stain it. You could... Um, I've showed you on other lives before how to use... Um, watered down paint to create a stain and then you would just of course need to seal that. I'm hoping that I have enough here to be able to do this. Now because this is an oil finish, it's um, I'm applying it with a cloth but you could apply it with a brush and normally I would use gloves. But alas I could not find my gloves. Now this one's chipped a little bit on the end so I have to watch out for that. So this is creating a driftwood sort of stain on this wood. See that? See the difference between the normal pine raw and then it's got this gorgeous driftwood looking colour. So that's one of the stain colours that Fusion has in their stain and finishing oil range. And again, you can use my Fusion affiliate link if you want that. I can pop that in the comments for you. I feel like I need a little bit of glue. Look at this, it's chipped off right here. Should I chip it off and just make it even more chippy? Why not? Gone. Okay, so going around now, I'm just using my cloth. If you were doing this at home, use gloves because <laughs> you will save a lot later. Now this, you know, all of these frames have, I think that they just use, because they're not gonna be seen on a, under the canvas, I think they just use any old rough cuts of wood. And this one actually, if you noticed, was a little bit darker than the other pine woods there. So it almost has that grayish driftwood look about it. There we go. So now you can see those two have been done in the driftwood. This one might look a little darker and that's because it already had a dark look about the wood. I do have enough. See, I was worried I wouldn't have enough, but it's just enough to cover. Oh, look, there's probably enough in there to cover a few frames, I'd say. So we are just staining our frame while our paint dries here, ready to do our um, 
stencil, stenciled sign. Now, if you missed last week, I made one of the farmhouse signs, a farmhouse sign using as well, I added the embellishment of the rub-on transfers. And there are some gorgeous rub-on transfers in the little farm range. Who else got the farm range transfers with the cows and the trucks, farm trucks? Um, what else is in there? Chickens, pigs, little animals. I want to get into that little ridge in there. It's being a bit tricky. Thank you guys so much for sharing our live today and sprinkling the love around Facebook land. Um, it helps it to get seen. So here's something that you could do if it's not getting into those edges. I'm just going to use that pointed end of our staple remover to get right in because I could see a little white line that wasn't getting covered with this stain. So our last one here, you can see how great that's looking now. It's going to look great against the, the black uh, chalkboard finish. And I am making a little bit of a mess on my hands. So as I said before, do as I say, not as I do. I just couldn't find my gloves to use them for our live today. Now one thing I did think about doing today, which I may save for another live after I've experimented a bit more with it, but I would love to know from you guys. Has anyone tried using the rub-on transfers on fabric that you would be washing? Like not just fabric that you're not going to wash, like um, I know that I've seen some people use it on a you know, pencil case or um, a craft that's not going to be washed. But has anyone done a transfer or sealed it or anything? Or have you seen anyone who has? Uh, using the rub-on transfers. And does it come off in the washing? Or would you use a sealer? So I plan on doing a little bit of experimenting with that. So I will let you know how I go with it. But I'd love to know if any of you have. Pat from Virginia, you've ordered the transfers. I'm so excited for you. You live on a farm. <laughs> yes, I'm spreading manure today. I bet it is smelly. That always is. Actually, I'm, I live in, we live in a brand new estate. Look, there's a little blue mark right here on the edge of my sign. I'm not happy that that's there, but anyway, nothing I can do about it. Anyway, and in this new estate, there was someone was spreading that, you know, that fertilizer that's really smelly. I think, I don't know what you call it there, blood and bone fertilizer. It's just disgusting smell. And so it was just wafting, wafting in all the houses around the place. Okay, so we've done our frame and that is the color Driftwood in the stain, stain and finishing oil by Fusion Mineral Paint. Um, and I do have a link for that. So if you want one, let me know. I'm just gonna swap places here again with our canvas, pop the frame down here for our finish. And this, because it's raining today, it's a wet day. And this is, oh, and I've got some dust speckles on it. Um, I need to dry it again. Diane says, I would love to try the transfer, but you're not sure what to do with them. Oh, Diane, we've got so many ideas. Um, if you look up some of our past lives, I did one last week, added it to a sign to embellish the sign. Um, you can use them as on all sorts of things. I've used them on a bowl that I, um, it almost looks like a decoupage kind of a thing. I painted a bamboo style bowl one of those old retro kind of ones, painted it with some chalk paint, and then I added the transfers over the top. Not the farm ones, but I used um, uh, some Hawaiian kind of looking ones, the hibiscus. There's so many different transfers around. Uh, but those transfers look great, like on signs or um, a whole lot of things. Anyone else got some ideas for going on? What do I have under my canvas? Oh, this is just my board, backboard, but so I don't ruin my dining room table. <laughs> so that's all I've got on there. Now, I feel like I've got a little fleck of something on here. I might just remember how I popped my brush in a plastic bag. Here's, here's one reason why. So I'm just gonna go over that where I see some little flecks of, um, dust that got onto my 
canvas. Let's see. All right. Oh, someone says, let's see. Oh, Mr. Sometimes my comments disappear and I miss the one that I briefly read and it disappears. Uh, someone mentioned something about Mod Podge having a some kind of a water resistant or washable Mod Podge. That might be an idea for Sierra. Yeah, the Minwax stain is lovely, Judy. I do like that as well. Michael's had these on sale. Do you mean the, um, Carol, do you mean the canvases? There are canvases really cheap everywhere, so there's a, there's a good idea. Okay, so here is our canvas. Remember, I just pulled it off the wooden frame, so reversing the canvas means you're just going to put the frame on top of the canvas instead of the canvas on top of the frame wrapped around it. So that's what go it's going to look like in the end. Now, to do that, I am going to be using today's stencil project is using this set. Now it is called the Ready to Tumble laundry set. I'll show you a close up there. That's what it's called and the link is in the description of our live and um, Essential Stencil will pin that to the top of our comments so that you can easily click on it. But these are 12 by 12 and yes that's no, that is not the size of my canvas, so you may want to get something a little bigger, but I found something that works, guys, and I'm going to change it up just slightly. So we've got this one, which says, let's get ready to tumble, and we've got the washer and dryer picture. Then on the back, we've got irony, the opposite of wrinkly, which is funny, punny. And then the other one inside, so it's a three-pack set. The other one is the one I'm going to be using today because... The words fit, um, they're a little bit narrower on the sides, and so instead of like coming out longer like these words, they're going to fit a little bit narrower onto my frame, and I've measured, and they will fit perfectly this way on my frame with that underneath, okay? But I'm going to change it up because, I don't know, fun fact about Australia, you probably already know. See, look, it even fits in the help wanted, and that's an essential part of this sign because who doesn't want help in the laundry? Yes, Carolyn, I just finished painting the canvas in just Fusion Mineral Paint Coal Black. So the frame here, I've got all the supply list in the description of the live. But after the live's finished, you can click on that supply list up in the description. And it will have everything there that you need to know. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but we're going to be putting this this way. Fun fact, in Australia, we don't say mom, we say mum. So we have M-U-M. So I want to Australianize my sign today because I'll probably be selling it in my shop right here in Australia or I'll be using it in my house and it'll have to say mum. <laughs> it could say mom if we wanted it to, but because we're in Australia, I'm going to change it up a bit. So you can change yours up if you wanted to if you are from Australia and happen to be watching today. Let me know that too because I'd love to know. So what I need to do is just tape off the O and use this U up here because they're all kind of... You know, it's one of those fonts that's kind of higgledy-piggledy up, up and down. So I'm going to take a little bit of tape, and when I do this part... Also, the other thing I will have to tape is these bubbles, okay? Can you see the bubbles don't quite fit within my frame? So see how we just can change things up to suit what we've got. If you did want a canvas that is the right size for you, because I just happen to have this one and I wanted to make it work... <laughs> You can actually buy a canvas that will make yours work. So I would suggest a 12 by 12 because that's the size of this set. 12 by 12 inch. Mine is probably um, 12 and 3 quarters this way and it's about 9 this way. And so it's not going to fit all the bubbles in. So what I can do is leave off the bubbles. I can take them off too. And I can... Um, I'm going to put this on my shirt. Do you notice my shirt too? I stenciled that using, which stencil is it? I think it's a um, stencil of the month stencil. So I'm going to tape off the O and change it to mum because, as I said, I'm here in Australia and that's, that's how we do it. <laughs> so I'm just trying to take off the tackiness so it's not so hard to remove my, oops, I should have made that a little longer. Not so hard to remove my painter's tape when I take it off. Okay, so then I just look for the areas. This bubble, I won't be, uh, I won't be affected because I it's not close, but this bubble over here is quite close. 
to the brackets and so I don't want to accidentally stencil that. So I can remove my frame now that I know where it's going to be sort of centered in the middle here. I love a rainy day. I don't know if you can hear it. It is raining outside. Pat, yes, Pat's saying she loves the red Angus, the um, transfer. Look, I've got them right here. The transfers, that you could use this for this kind of a, that would be cute in a frame, wouldn't it? In one of these reversed canvas frames. There's the red Angus. Isn't he cute? I love his bangs. And then we've got, of course, two different sheets of the farmhouse transfers. And they would be fun on any of these kind of canvas ideas as well. Okay, so remind me not to do the bubbles. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape in the corners here so it doesn't move around. And I've got it exactly where I want it. You could cover up the corner staples with snowflakes, but with this stencil you could use little clothespins. Evelyn, what a great idea. I love it. I love it when you guys come up with all these fun ideas that we can, that we can add. All right, I'm going to be using one of my essential stencil brushes. Um, they're kind of skinny letters. You can just use any brush you want, really. I'm just going to use the three-quarter inch brush. They come in a set of four. Our brush is back in stock yet. I think we've got another few weeks till those are back in stock uh, but they really are good brushes. I think you can let Essential Stencil know on the product item itself for the brushes that um, that you are interested in those and they'll give you a notification. Oh guys that's the one thing I didn't bring was a offloading thing. I'm going to just use this that I used for the stain because it's really important to have something, an area where you can offload all the excess paint that is on your brush. I'm using Victorian Lace, which is a one of the whites of the Fusion Mineral Paint range to do my stenciling today. And I just added a bit on the brush and it's way too much. So we just need to remove some of that, popping it back in the pot and then offloading, making sure it's not an oily area because this is stain. We don't want to get that on the stain. Just using this simply to remove the excess of the brush. And then we just go ahead and because I've removed all the excess, we've got enough room, enough uh, paint on the brush to do a swirly method of stenciling. And it's, it's, notice I'm adding some more back in right now. And that's because I want nice thin coats. It's much better to have a couple of thin layers rather than um, getting it too thick on your brush and risking that bleeding underneath the stencil and getting really fuzzy edges. I'm picking up some of that, not wiping it off because I can see that there's excess on my cloth there. So that's added a bit more in. And you may find that depending on what sort of coverage you want, you might want a really strong coverage, a really solid white look, or you could, if I just do it like this, it will give it sort of like a chalky feel as if I've drawn this by hand using chalk on a chalkboard. It's got that kind of a look to it. Oh, I feel like that had a little bit too much on my brush. Yeah, these brushes are great for <coughs> using on stencils of any kind. Just making sure, yep. My blue tape was just stretching a little bit too long <laughs> near the end there. Okay. There we go, so now we can See, it seems like I'm going really fast, but when you've got not very much on your brush, you can kind of just keep keep swirling, just adding another coat there, making sure I don't hit those bubbles, guys. Oof, it was close. It was close. But yeah, I think we'll have a little bit of a chalky feel to this stencil. 
fine. Has anyone else got their farm collection in the mail yet? Those of you who ordered the bundle maybe, or you maybe just ordered some of these, there are, this one I checked, there are some left on the website. So this is the laundry set, set of three different stencils. So lots of fun for, you could make all three and pop them side by side on a, in a laundry room. Um, oops, sorry, I'm missing some of our comments here. Someone just mentioned my t-shirt and yes, that was an essential stencil project I did on a live. So if you missed that live, you can go back and look at all the lives that we have done on the essential stencil page. Sometimes I prefer to do that on a laptop, on a desktop, sorry, a computer, so you can kind of scroll through and look at the different lives all at once. And they come up in a big list and you can just kind of see a thumbnail of the project that was worked on. Essential Stencil also has playlists. If you go to the video section, you can look up playlists. So uh, most of the lives done by each of the ambassadors are in a different playlist for each of them. We've got Christmas playlist. If you're looking for Christmas decoration ideas, you can look at past years where we've done Christmas stencils. And um, the links are all there as you watch the lives in the description for where you can find those. <coughs> And then you'll be able to see which ones, if there are any that have been discontinued or whatever. There we go. Essential Stencils popped up our laundry stencil. So you can see that link there and you can save 10% with my code. Okay, just adding a little bit more touch there. And now, remember, if you've just joined me, you'll notice I've, t I've taped over the O in the word mom because in Australia we say mum with a U. So I'm going to just change that up a little bit. And out of you, you've got some little flecks. Oh no, it's just, it's not paint, it's just, I don't know what it is. A little bit of, looks like a bit of wood. So I'm not sure what that is. Oh dear, and I've got some black paint on my frame. Oh. Okay, so now I'm going to take uh, the U here. So that isn't looking nice and crisp. See, we've got our, <laughs> we've got our mm, mm's laundry service. So, so far, Looking good so far, and that's going to go under our under our frame. But let's just take this off the O now, and I just need to tape off either side of this U. I can probably do it that way. Uh, there. Tape off the A. Tape off the N. And now I've got to place my U so I can. Because so it's in say mum because that's how we say it here in Oz. Where it's raining here in Queensland. Okay, I think I've centered it correctly. Can't quite see through because I've taped them over. So I've just got to make a good educated guess. I reckon we've got it. Okay, once again pushing my tape down on those sides. Grab my brush and away we go again with the letter U. Thank you so much for sprinkling, Brenda. That's amazing. Yes, you can definitely catch the replay. And while I'm talking about replays, um, you can comment the word replay once our live has finished. We're live. If you see the little red live sign or a red dot in the top of your phone, that means we're live. But if it's the replay, you can comment the word replay in 24 hours after our live has gone live. And you'll be able to tell when that is by the date stamp at the, at the top once we've finished. And, um, <coughs> oops, it feels a little sticky. And then you've got another chance of winning a prize. Okay, so that is my mum's laundry service. I love it. See? <laughs> now it's Australian. Now it's Australian. All right, so we've got our stencil brush that we need to just clean off. So I am finished with it, but maybe I want to do a project or something later. You can either put it in a plastic bag or in a damp cloth. So I've got a damp cloth right here. It is cute, isn't it? Okay, so we've done our, done our uh, stained our frame, which was this color. 
and we've just stained it this driftwood colour and it all sort of looks a bit more uniform now. So see these top and bottom, well these ones, these pieces of wood a little bit darker than the pine here. So when I put that driftwood stain it kind of just blends it all in, gives it a nice effect there. Okay, so that dries super quickly. And now I've got to put my, my um, centre that, put the frame on top and I've got my staple gun, handy dandy staple gun somewhere. There it is. And all of these sort of different tools and things that I do use, I do have an Amazon list with uh, those ideas on it. So we want to stretch this as much as we can, but I do want to make sure that those brackets are inside. So I've got to make sure that this is exactly, and it doesn't move, exactly in the right spot. Oh, this does look old from the back, doesn't it? So I want to do top and bottom first so that this is, well, we can do side to side also. So I want to pop this frame around about in the middle of the frame where I can feel where the frame is. And I've got a battery powered electric stapler. Stretching that across as much as I can. And I go into the middle of this frame here. I want to make sure we've got room for it to... Ooh, where are we? About the centre. And then we go top to bottom, finding the centre. Stretching it out as much as you can, going halfway. Be safe. Thank you, Peggy. <laughs> I will. Oh, you should have been here yesterday. I was actually putting up, putting an actual frame together, a really large frame for a painting I want to hang in our living room. And um, I was using a nail gun. It was quite awkward, and that, they always scare me. Um, okay, so this is how we're, it's turning out great. We've got it stretched across there. So now we can stretch off, let's say, the corner and make sure we've got that going. You can kind of feel where it is. Make sure we've stretched it as much as you can with your hand. If we need to go around... Um, so we've got it on and kind of go around and add staples to further in if it's going to look like it's too far I don't know if it's if it's going to look like we can see gap in there which we can't it's all stretched pretty pretty well and again this way and now all we need to do is just kind of fill out all those centered places. But again, I still like to stretch that, make sure we've got it in the center. I feel like the canvas that I picked up, I just literally got this canvas from a thrift store. And it had some, it's almost like it was poked and leaning on something that, that made it have these little dings in it. But... If you're just doing this for around the home, or you could just buy a new a new canvas. This works on either. I just had this horrible feeling. What if it came right through? Okay, so you can see that how it's looking. Now I want to get my handy either scissors or you can use these, I don't know if you would call them craft secateurs or something or other, to just cut off the the um, canvas around those areas there. Maybe the scissors might work just as well. Making sure it's all coming away from the frame. You could all, you could actually do this beforehand and if you wanted to make a neater job of it you could have you know measure it all out exactly. But we're just getting rid of all of that bit. Imagine this on, um, let's go this way, on a green background, like I was saying before. Oh, another one chipped off. Well, it's going to be a chippy frame, that's for sure. Green background, you could do any sort of background for this type of a sign. It just creates a lovely, it's 
So this is a reverse canvas. I've seen um, several people do these canvas ideas. And um, like I said before, I've done a few but differently because I usually will just use the frame of an old canvas that actually has a picture on it and sometimes they don't work as well to paint over the top of. Um, but for this one, we used a brand new canvas and actually reuse the canvas. Whereas before, I'll remove the canvas, throw that away and use a backboard like a um, just a pine plywood board to create a background for my stencil. So but this time I've just used the canvas, which kind of does make it a bit lighter. We've got a little bit of, it's a bit wonky here, but that's okay. Look, you can remove any staples that don't quite look right. Add any extra if you feel like it needs extra. And there we have a cute little farmhousey kind of sign that would look great in my laundry. I don't know about you. <laughs> would you add one to yours? And don't forget that there's, this is a three pack set. So if you don't have this one, lots of fun, especially if you're making signs for gifts for people. We've got the mum's laundry service and don't forget, it does say mum. It doesn't say mum like, you know, Australians. I just changed it up a bit using the U. And then we've got these two here. So it's got, let's get ready to tumble. Lots of fun for that laundry sign. Irony, the opposite of wrinkly. So those are the, the two ones there. So we're going to get ready to pick some prize winners for our live today. And I want to just um, thank you guys so much for sharing our live today. Oh, someone just got a huge envelope in the mail. It must be all the, the sales that have been going on. I love it. Now, I was going to add some bubbles, wasn't I? And I didn't. Oh, well. It, I think it looks great without the bubbles. What do you think? I like it without the bubbles too, so we'll just go with that. I was going to add some, but I just totally forgot. But you could add a couple up here if you wanted to. But I think it looks fine just like this without all the bubbles in it. So let me just whoop, let me just pop you up here a minute so we can see everybody. Don't forget, here's my code, I Restore Stuff. Um, and you can follow me at I Restore Stuff on Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all of the different places. Oh yes, Brenda said her favourite is the word search for the bathroom. That's They've got some really funny laundry and bathroom signs. So just have a look up the latest collection. If you go to Essential Stencils website, you'll be able to see up in the menu, you can drop down and see um, latest collection or you know most recent or newest. And it'll come up with all these fun signs for the laundry and things like that. So let's have a look. Who's our prize winners today? Essential Stencil will be busy picking those. And uh, I can't wait to experiment with those um, transfers. I will look through the comments because I wasn't able to check on that because I had a question for you. Usually it's other people questioning me about my lives. But I wanted to know if anyone's transferred on fabric and washed the fabric. So there's that. I would love to know if that's you, let me know. Um, that turned out so nice, love it. Thank you guys. Yes, I was going to do the bubbles and I missed the bubbles, but you could do the bubbles and add a few just up on the top sides of this one. Or if you did do an actual 12 by 12 sign where it had the 12 inches in this space in here, just make sure when you do your canvas that you are measuring this inside space is what will have to fit the stencil. All right, we have our winners today, you all, and we have Carol. Sandra, Carol and Heather. Heather, you were not able to be tagged, so could someone tag Heather McClure and let them know that they have won a prize from Essential Stencil and they've got instructions right there in that tagged um, pinned comment where it says winners, congratulations winners, and uh, you'll be able to claim your prize. Tell them that you won a prize on Sharon's Live today. So I am Sharon from the blog I Restore Stuff where I upcycle furniture and home decor. I would love for you to go and check out my blog and do a little search there for some fun things that you might like to upcycle in your home. And um, thank you for watching my live today. Now, I uh, might have to go do the laundry. I will see you next week. Help, help, wanted, bye. <laughs>